Okay, so chapter five, and chapter five is about the skin, and the other name for the skin is, does anybody know? Uh, epidermis is one of the layers. There is a system that contains the skin and other things that we talked about in chapter one. Integumentary system, yes. So this, the integumentary system is not skin. It's a skin and appendages. What's appended to the skin? What else associated with, with your skin? Nail, hair. hair, nail, glands, sweat glands, right? And so on. So it is hair, nail, and glands. So if you put the skin with hair, nails, and glands all together, that will be the integumentary system. So we're doing the skin, which is part of the integumentary system. And the first thing that we need to know, and it's actually important, you have to remember this, is the function of the skin. What are the functions of the skin? The, 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 the thing that we all know, uh, we have a skin to protect us. Yes, this is one of. But the other thing is excretion. Anything that's extra, it's not just water. If you ever see before that there are some people, when they sweat too much, you see their skin is getting a little bit whitish until they clean it. Did you see, ever see that before? The skin is getting a little bit whitish and you just um, they clean it and they are fine. This is extra salt. So the salt is usually, we get rid of it through the kidney in the urine. But if you have too much, you can get rid of it through the sweat. Okay, so it's excretion. Not only that, other things too. So it's excretion also. Temperature regulation. And this is where you see if it is really hot, you see your skin is flushed and uh, pinkish colored, right? Because your blood vessels are dilating, right? Become wider so that the blood goes to the skin and you get rid of the heat. And the other way around, if it is really cold, you see your skin become a little bit pale, right? And it can actually go all the way to become a little bit blue, right? Did you see that before? So what's happening here is the blood vessels in the skin constrict to keep the blood that's warm inside so you don't lose your heat. So this is called temperature regulation. Sensory perception, you touch something and you know what it is. Uh, since this is a vitamin D, okay, so this is one of the functions. We make vitamin D through the skin. How? The ultraviolet radiation will activate the raw material to make vitamin D, and this is how we do it. That's why if you heard about, especially kids, who are not exposed to sun enough time, they get what? The bone will become weak, and what they call this condition? Scurvy. Uh, scurvy is another condition. It's not scurvy. For the kids, when the, the bone become weak and they, they start to rickets. bend like this? Rickets, yes. That's why we get rickets. Why did you get rickets? You're not exposed enough. So what? So the ultraviolet radiation that's in the sun will not work on your skin, and you will not make vitamin D, Right? The other thing is absorption because of the vitamin D and other things. So you can also absorb. So this is, this is from the basics of this chapter. You have to remember this. Functions of the skin, including every single part that we talked about, including which vitamin? Vitamin D. Remember that this vitamin D is important for bone. If you don't have enough vitamin D, your bone will become weak, right? Not only for kids, by the way, even us. If one of us stay indoors, for like a month or something, you will, your bone will become weaker and you will start to actually bend a little bit. This is another condition, but we're not talking about it. The, there is similar condition to rickets in kids. Okay, it's called osteomalacia, you don't have to know that. But there is another condition that's similar to rickets in us, adults. So that's the importance of um, making vitamin D through the skin. So the skin is basically Two major layers, the outer one is called epiderms, and the inner one is called derms. Epi means above or superficial to. Please remember the prefixes and suffixes. It will help you. Epi means above, superficial to, above. So you have the dermis and the epiderms. The epidermis is superficial to the derms, above the derms which is what you actually see. If you look at your skin, you're looking at the epiderms. The derms is underneath, okay? So derms covered by epiderms. And there is an, uh, another layer underneath, it's, it's actually tissue, and this is called 
the subcutaneous tissue. Cutaneous means skin. Subcutaneous, what sub means? Blue or under. So subcutaneous tissue is the tissues under the skin. What do you have under your skin? That if you eat a lot, you gain weight. Adipose tissue, which is fat. So what we have under the skin? Adipose tissue, fat. This is where we store the fat. So, so we store the fat in the subcutaneous tissue. So remember this, we have, here is the dermis. This is the epidermis above, and you have fats underneath. Okay, so those two layers together, epiderms and derms, and then you have fat underneath, which is called the subcutaneous tissue. We have two types of skin, thick and thin skin. Thick skin is the skin that we see like in our palm and sole. This is the thickest one. The thin one is the one that's in the eyelid, in the genitalia. So this is the other type of skin. Just know that we have thick and thin skin, two types of skin, not just one. So it's different layers. This is a picture that's a cut section showing you the skin. What is this? What is this yellow round? Fat. So which layer is this? Subcutaneous. Okay. Subcutaneous is also known as sub means cutaneous means skin. So this is under the skin. The other name is hypodermis. Hypo is the same as sub. Under. Dermis, a layer of the skin. So what's the difference between subcutaneous and hypoderms? No difference. It's the same thing. But we need to know both of them. Okay, so hypoderms is the same as subcutaneous. If you take a subcutaneous injection, you're taking hypodermal injection. It's the same thing. This is the fat. This is where we have the fat. Okay? What are the contents of each one of these layers? This is extremely important, and this is anatomy. What is in each one of these layers? If you look at this section, the top part, which is this, this is the epidermis, and as you see here, it's several layers that we will actually need to know. And then you have the dermis with all these structures inside. You see this? What is this? The hair. Where is the location of the hair follicle? In the dermis, in the, uh, in the epidermis, in the dermis, or in the hypo? In the dermis. And what are these? These are the glands, sweat glands. Where is it located? Also the same, dermis. And these, you see these? These are other types of glands that secrete oily secretions that gets on the, or that covers the hair as it grows, and that's why our hair will become uh, soft, oily a little bit. Okay, so these are the glands. Where is the location of the hair and glands? These are the sebaceous glands I'm talking about. Where is the location of all glands? Derms. Okay, how about the hyperderms? What's the importance? We have fat, we have blood vessels, you see red and blue, and we have nerves. So what do we have in the hypoderms? Fat, blood, blood vessels, and nerves. and nerves. Okay? So the epiderms. The epiderms is keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium. Do you guys still remember that from last time? Do you remember stratified? What stratified means? Many layers. So it is many layers. And the top is squamous, but it is keratinized. What keratinized mean? Keratinized mean contain keratin. What is the keratin? Keratin is tough protein. If the cell contains tough protein, the cell itself will become hard, tough. So that's why the skin is keratinized. The epiderms specifically, not the skin. The epiderms. The epiderms contain keratinized stratified epithelium. So it contains a lot of keratin. Keratin. What's the keratin? The keratin is tough protein. Any cell that have a lot of keratin, it will be a tough cell. And that's why our skin is tough. The outer layer is tough, keratinized. And this is what's actually protecting us. This is the most protective layer, the epiderms, the superficial one. 
the one that's protecting us. Against what? Against anything. Pathogens, ultraviolet radiation. Um, it keeps our water. You know what? If you, if you like have some friction, something like this, on a rough surface, what will happen to your skin? Abrasions and you start to ooze some fluids, right? So obviously, this layer of epidermis was actually protecting us and keeping our water unless you actively wanted to lose it. So when you sweat, this is intentional, right? You are sweating for a reason, but you don't lose your water in a way that's not controlled. You control it. Your body control it, right? You lose Sweat, you lose some water if you want to. If it is cold, do you sweat? No, you keep your water for yourself, right? So this is controlled. If, the, if, if there is any abrasion, that's not controlled. You're losing your water, so it keeps our water or, 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 or protect us from excessive water loss. Keratinocytes, what keratino means? Which is keratin. Yes, a keratin which is a protein. What sites? Mean? So what's a keratinocyte? The cells that contain, which is, the name is? <laughs> keratin, yes. So what are the keratinocytes? Cells that contain a lot of keratin. What's a keratin? It's a tough protein, right? So that's what keratinocytes means. The thin skin is four layers. The thick skin is five layers. This is the difference. This is thick skin, right? This, this skin is really thick versus other types of skin which is thin. What's the difference? Four versus five layers. Where you have the thick skin, palm, and sole. This is the only, that's the only region that we have the thick skin. Your thick skin is here, palm and sole. Otherwise, it's thin, four layers. So there is one layer that's missing in the, in the rest of the skin, which is the thin skin. This picture is showing you like a little bit of separation between the epiderms and the derms, okay? Look at this. Projections, projection, and here is other projection, projection. So the two layers, epiderms versus the derms, they fit together like this, okay? So they don't move on, on, um, on, this, uh, on, on top of each other. There is no movement. Why? Because the, there, there are some ridges, called epidermal ridges, and there are dermal papillae, so they fit together like this. These are the ridges, these are the papillae, so they go like this, okay? Epidermal ridge. And the epidermal ridges, these are the ones that are responsible for our fingerprints. Did you ever see your fingerprint? If you look at your fingerprint with like a magnifying lens or something, you, or even if you look at it close, you will see that it's Elevation depression, elevation depression, right? Looks like this. It's not a smooth surface. Up and down, up and down. And it, this is what fingerprints mean. Where is it coming from? Epidermal ridges, okay? Now the layers. You actually need to know these layers. I know the name is hard and tough, but you can very much find, see questions on this. So yes, you need to know to see these layers, or you, need, or you need to remember these layers. If you start from here, look at this. This, the whole thing up here, this is the epidermis, and underneath is the dermis. We'll take it from the bottom. Look at this one here. From each layer, there is one thing that we need to know. Do you remember I told you, and when we did the organelles, I told you there is one thing that you need to know from each organelle, like the mitochondria as the powerhouse. Did you see that in your exam? Mm -hmm. So there is something, okay? There is one thing that's the key that you have to remember from each one of these layers. So stratum, stratum means layer. Basal, basal. So this stratum basal means the basal layer. The one that's at the base, the one that's at the bottom. This is what stratum basal means, okay? So stratum basal is the bottom layer. And since this is the bottom layer, the function is two things that we have to know about this layer. Number one, because it is the base, the bottom layer, so this is the layer that contains stem cells. Stem cells or germinative cells. Stem or germinative cells. 
what does that mean? It means when you lose any of these superficial layers, you know that we lose our skin on a daily basis, right? Not the whole skin, just a very superficial layer. How do you replace it? From here. Are we following? So stratum basal, because stratum means layer, basal means base, basal, it's at the base, it's at the bottom. So this is where stem or germinative cells are located, and this is what you're going to replace other cells when it's lost, other layers, right? Number two, the melanin is produced in this layer, and this is what we have to know about this layer. Stratum basal, it's at the bottom, at the base, you have stem or germinative cells, and this is where we produce our melanin. Melanin. Melanocytes. What's melanocytes means? The cells that produce, which is, what's the name of the, of the, of the pigment? Melanin. Melanocytes are the cells that make melanin. What's melanin? Melanin is the, uh, the, bra the brown black pigment that give us our color. You have a lot, you'll be darker. You have less, you will be lighter colored, right? This is the main, there are other pigments, but this is the most important one. So stratum basal, this is where we do mitosis. And mitosis means you have the stem layers that you're going to generate other cells. The next layer is called the stratum spinosum. And this is where we start making the keratin, right? One word. This is where we make the keratin. Granulosum. Granulosum means granules. Granulosum. Stratum granulosum. Stratum means strata, means layer. Stratum means layer. Granulosum means the one that contains granules. Okay, what's the importance of the granules? These granules make the keratin again. Remember that all these cells are keratinocytes anyway. They make keratin. So what's the importance of stratum granulosum? It have granules that make keratin. The next layer is called the stratum lucidum, and lucidum means transparent. So it doesn't have anything. It's nothing important about this. Just know that this is stratum lucidum. The top one is called the stratum corneum. And what corneum means? Corneum means cornified, means tough. So this is the toughest one. This is the most superficial one. This is the one that's more protective. This is the one that keep our water. This is the one that if you lose, you start to lose, if you lose it this layer, you're going to, to lose your water, okay? So this is the stratum corneum and it takes about 10 days for the cells to migrate from this stratum basal. So you produce the cells here through mitosis, and it goes up, 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 up. The time it takes until you go all the way up to replace the cells that's lost is 10 days. In this point, you have to know the arrangement. Okay, so remember this. It's basal, spinosum, granulosum. Lucidum corneum. So if I ask you which is the deepest layer, stratum basal. Which is the most superficial layer, corneum. Okay, so the arrangement is important. Where is it located? Corneum means cornified. Corne means tough. The most keratinized one. That this is the top layer or the most superficial layer. We have different types of cells. There are melanocytes, dendritic cells, and tactile cells. These are specialized cells in the epiderms. Melanocytes, melano means melanin, right? Cytes means cells. So melanocytes are the cells that make melanin. Where is it located? Which layer? The stratum basal. Yes, this is where it's located. It will make melanin. The melanin will travel and, and occupy different layers. Yes. But where do we make it? Where do we have it? Stratum basal. Dendritic cells are cel cells that um, protect us, immune cells. And the tactile cells are the cells for touch. Tactile touch. 
These are the touch cells that give us an idea that you're touching something. The next layer is called the derms, and the derms is basically two layers, papillary layer and reticular layer. There are two layers, papillary and reticular. Most important thing to remember about the dermis is what do we have in the dermis? We have the glands, we have the hair follicle. Do not forget ever, because this is the main thing, what are the contents of each layer? What are the contents of the, the derms, which is very important. This is where we have our glands. Glands, not gland, glands. So we have different types of glands. Sweat gland, sebaceous glands, two types of glands, uh, and the hair follicle. Um, the, the dermal papillae with the epidermal ridges, that's what's, what's going to make our fingerprint. And I mentioned that. There are other blood vessels located in the dermis. And then um, we have the subcutaneous tissue. Okay, now one more time. This is the core. This is what you have to know. What do we have in here in the subcutaneous tissue? What's the other name first? Hypo? Germs. That's number one. Number two, what do we have here? And? Blood vessels and nerves. What do we have here? Sweat gland, well, glands and hair follicles. Hair follicles. Plus also blood vessels and nerves. Right? Glands, hair follicle and blood vessels and nerves. Here we have fat, blood vessels and nerves. Okay? This, the toughest layer. This is the superficial layer. This is... The other layers that we were talking about, and in this, in this part, you have to know the sequence. Basal at the base, at the bottom, corneum on the top, and the rest, the sequence is important. Subcutaneous tissue, what do you call it again? Subcutaneous tissue is called hypoderms. What's the hypoderms? It's irregular connective tissue that contain adipose tissue. So, yes, it, 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 the fat is in the subcutaneous tissue. The fat is in the subcutaneous tissue. Where is it located? In the hypoderms. Yes. Where within the hypoderms? In areolar connective tissue. Are we following? Areolar connective tissue. Do you have to remember everything that I'm talking about right now? Yes, and that's why I'm stressing on it. You have to know this, okay? We have fat in the subcutaneous tissue within or inside the areolar connective tissue. And this is obviously where we have the fat. And what's the importance of the fat? Why do we have fat under the skin? Is it useless? Insulation. Insulation, that's one. Protection. Protection. Storage. Storage of fat, yes. So we, ha we have three functions of the fat. The fat is not useless. We have it there for insulation, protection, and to store fats if needed. So if you're starving, if you didn't eat much, you can start taking from that fat. Okay? Um, if you, if somebody's taking uh, injections under the skin, we hear about that, insulin, there are different types of injections. That's called the subcutaneous injection. Subcutaneous, which is the same as hypodermal. So this is the site of these injections. This is the importance of this layer. Okay? Now the skin color. Each one of us will have a different color, right? What is the base of this? What's making our color? It's not black and white. This is not true. It's not black and white. It's a mix. What is that mix? The most important one is melanin. The melanin is a brown-black pigment. You have more melanin, you're darker. You have less melanin, you're lighter. Is that the only one? No. We have also keratin and hemoglobin. Keratin will give you that yellowish tinge of color, and hemoglobin will give you that reddish. So your color is actually a mix of melanin with different amounts, keratin, where is the word keratin coming from? Or carotin? Carotin, I'm sorry, not keratin. Take it back. Carotin. Where, what keratin is coming from? 
Carrot. Yes, that's a carrot. The carrot that we eat, right? And and they always tell us that if you want it, um, your vision to be good, eat carrot. Mm -hmm. Our grandma, right? Eat a lot of carrot. Yeah, what, what, what does that mean? It means when you eat a lot of carrot, the carrot is precursor. The carrot contain carotin. Carotin is coming from carrot. It's, it's also come from other things, but this is the major source. This will give us vitamin A. Vitamin A, okay? So what do we need to know about this? The, the skin color comes from th three things. Melanin. Carotin and hemoglobin. hemoglobin. Melanin is brown black. Carotin, the color of the carrot. The color of the carrot is yellow, orange. Yes. There are there are different types, by the way. The one that we always see in the stores is usually orange, but there is yellow, right? So there are two types. So this is yellow orange, yellow orange, and this is what give us this tinge of yellowish discoloration. The more hemoglobin you have, the reddish. You, your, your skin will become a little bit pinkish, or reddish a little bit. You have less, it will become less reddish. So if you have this combination, this will give us our skin color. It depends on the amount of each one of those three. You have some melanin, you have some keratin, and you have some hemoglobin. Put those together, it will give you your skin color, okay? And the keratin, the importance is keratin, carrot. When you eat carrot, you get vitamin A. You activate the keratin, to make vitamin A, and vitamin A is important for vision. Vision. So if you want it to improve your vision, if you want it your eye, the vision to be good, eat carrot. Keratin. Keratin. So melanin from melanocytes, and it's located in the base in the stratum basal, and. The question is, what's the importance of the melanin, besides giving us our color, but what's the protective function of the melanin? Why do we have it? Why some of us will be darker and some of us will be lighter? The, 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 the melanin has a huge importance, which is protective against ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation. So if, you, if you're darker, you're protected more. If you're lighter, you're protected less. You're less protected, okay? So that's why in, in, um, in, 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 in countries that's, that have more sun or it's more um, toward the equator, the skin color will be darker. If you move away from the equator, your skin color will be lighter. Why? Because you need more protection or less protection. If it is really cold, you don't see the sun that much, you're not exposed much, you don't need a lot of melanin. If you're exposed much, you need more melanin. So this is the importance of melanin protection against ultraviolet radiation. And that's explain why people of lighter colored are more exposed to skin tumors, right? Ultraviolet radiation. If, you're, if we have two people, it's, it's just a statistics, okay? It doesn't mean that you get something and he doesn't get it. No, it's more statistics. If two people, one is lighter and one is darker, both of them are exposed five hours a day for some time, the lighter color would be more exposed to get one of these skin cancers. So that's why you have to be protected more. You have to be more careful when you are exposed to, this, to the sun because you're not as, as protected, okay? Less protect. All of us have melanin, okay? But it's how much? How much you produce melanin? So this is for melanin. So again, the skin color is a mix of all of these, melanin, carotin, and hemoglobin, okay? So some brown black, some red, some yellow orange, mix them together, that's our skin color. Now, the accessory structures, and this will bring us to uh, the integumentary system. The integumentary system is the skin and the skin appendages, or the skin accessories. What are the accessory structures? Number one is the hair. Where is the hair follicle located? Derms. So the derms is located in, uh, the, uh, the, the hair follicle is located in the dermis, and the hair follicle is this, the, the bottom part. The part that's actually produced the hair, and the hair will grow up until 
it pierces the epidermis, and this is how we, this is where we see it outside. So there is the hair uh, pulp that's in the in the at the bottom and hair follicle at inside within deep within the derms, and then you have root and shaft. So this is the root down here. This is the bulb, and the shaft is this, the main thing. Okay, the shaft. Okay, when we, when we talked about the derms, the, epi, uh, the hypoderms and the epiderms, we mentioned that in the hypoderms, which is also called the subcutaneous tissue, right? Subcutaneous tissue, hypoderms. We said that there, are, there is fat, right? And irregular connective tissue, blood vessels and nerves, right? Here we have glands, hair follicle, plus blood vessels and nerves. Did we say that here? No. We don't have blood vessels in the epidermis. Okay? And this is where the name A vascular. A means, when you put A before any word, without or no. So the epidermis is A vascular. No blood vessels. So how can this top layer get the nutrients? The nutrients come from the blood vessels, right? This is where we get the blood with oxygen and nutrients. How you get your oxygen and nutrients then? You get it from the underneath. It just oozes and squeezes itself up to feed the epidermis. So the epidermis is a vascular, no blood vessels. You get your nutrients from the underneath layer. There is a muscle that's called erector pili muscle. Translation. Erector means erection, and erection means stand up like this. Pili means hair. So these are the muscles that erect the hair, the goose bump, that we all know. If it's really cold and you're shivering, your hair will stand up like this, right? So this is where the name comes from. So there are some muscles, which are these muscles, look at this. When they contract, so the hair will be like this. Okay, and these muscles, this is the muscle, and when it contracts, it will make the hair erected, meaning it's straight, goosebump. This is the erector um, pili muscle. It's not, it, the importance is just a little bit of uh, isolation if, if the weather is really cold. This is the importance, okay? So the hair is to protect us, and obviously, we, we have some areas in our body that does not have any hair. Where do you don't have hair? You have hair in your palm? You have it in your soul? No? Lips? The lips itself? Yeah, you have around it. But you have in the lips? No? Uh, parts of the external genitalia? There is hair around the external genitalia, but there are parts that doesn't have any hair. And this is the hairless parts of our body. Okay? Glands. Very important to remember these three glands. Very important. Okay? Very important to remember this. We have three different types of glands. We have the sweat glands. We all know the sweat glands, right? Where is it located? Where are the glands located? Which layer? Dermis. So sweat glands produce Sweat, yes. Sebaceous gland, the gland always, the, the name of the gland always comes from the type of secretion. The type of secretion. So, sebaceous gland, the glands that secrete sebum. Sebaceous sebum. Ceraminous glands, the glands that secrete ceramin. Sweat glands are the glands that produce sweat. Okay? What's the sebum, what's the sweat, and what's the ceremony? Are we following so far? Any question? The gland, the name of the gland always come from the type of secretion. Whatever you're secreting, that will give you the name. Okay, so we have three types of glands. Sebaceous, sweat, and ceraminous. Sebaceous and sweats 
And sweat glands, we talked about this in the dermis. What do we have to know about? There is one thing that we have to know about each one of those. Sebaceous gland. What are you secreting? Sebum. What's the sebum? The sebum is an oily secretion that makes the skin okay, nice and moist. Okay? A little bit oily. And we all hear about these different types of shampoos that are advertised. This shampoo is good for oily hair, right? This, this shampoo is good for dry hair. We hear that, right? What does that mean? It means that we all have moderate type of sebaceous secretion. We have enough amount of sebum so that your skin is just nice and moist. If you have these glands are secreting too much, your skin will, your hair will become oily. If it is secreting less, if it is not secreting much, if it's secreting less than it should, this will give you the dry hair. So your hair is not supposed to be oily or dry. It should be in the middle, right? Just normal. If you secrete too much sebum, your skin will become, your hair will become oily, the oily hair. If you secrete less than you should, your skin, your hair will become dry. Are we following so far? So what's the importance of sebum? It's oily secretion that moist our skin, uh, our skin and our hair, but our hair more. And it actually contain some uh, material or antibodies that, or um, antibiotics that inhibit the pathogens. So if the, there are pathogens everywhere, right? It's all over. So the pathogens on your hair and on your scalp, the, 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 the sebum will kill it, okay? So it contains some sort of antibiotics, different types of antibodies or antibiotics that's going to kill any pathogen on the surface. So sebaceous glands secrete sebum that's oily and kill pathogens. This is what we need to know in this part. Next type of glands is called the sweat glands. We all know the sweat glands secrete sweat, right? Sweat, yes. This is the, the, the normal type of sweat glands. So there is one thing that we will add. Yes, sweat glands secrete sweat. Yes, we know that. But there is another type of gland. So the, the sweat glands that we all know is called a crying glands. And you need to remember this. The normal sweat glands that secrete sweat that we all know is called a crying glands. And we need to remember this. It's called a crying glands. Uh, do you mean we have other types of sweat gland? Yes. It's a special type in special spots, certain spots, that's called epocrine sweat glands. So what's the normal sweat glands? Ecrine. Ecrine. There are some special sweat glands that's called epocrine glands. What's the epocrine glands? Epocrine glands are special type of sweat glands that secrete secretions. When these secretions is broken down, it gives you an odor, and this is related to maturity and to um, sexual attraction. So it is located in certain spots, and in the armpit, specifically, around the nipple and around the genitalia, just in these spots. It's not like sweat glands, it's all over your body, right? We know that. We sweat from all over our body. But there are certain spots that contain special type, special type of sweat glands, and these are called the hypocrine glands, or hypocrine glands. Where is it located? Under, in the armpit, around the nipple, and around the genitalia. What's the importance? There is material that's secreted when it broke down. It will give an order for sexual attraction, basically. So obviously, before maturity, it, it, it doesn't, it, it's not active. It's activate after that, and it starts to give this order for sexual attraction in certain spots, right? But what's all over the skin? The acrine or acrine glands. Okay, so these are the acrine, the acrine glands. So what's the function of the acrine glands? Just the sweat. So what's the sweat? The sweat will cool down our body, sweat. And you can get rid of anything that you don't need, excretion. Okay, acrine glands are the normal, the, the, regular stun, uh, the regular sweat glands that cool down our body and do some excretion function. Okay. The epocrine glands, I mentioned that, 
it is located in certain spots and it's active after, at puberty and after, and this is to produce um, the, f uh, the pheromones. What are the pheromones? Something like the hormones, again, for, for sexual attraction. So this is something that will become active after puberty, and the location is in the armpit, around the, the nipples, and around the genitalia. The next type is called the ceraminous glands, and ceraminous is coming from a type of secretion, ceramin, ceraminous, ceramin. What's the ceramin? The ceramin is the air wax. The ceramin is the air wax. And what's the importance of air wax? The air wax is, is inside our acoustic meatus. It's inside this external ear. And it's there for a reason. Okay? It's there to protect us against anything that enters. It's protecting a very delicate structure. What's that structure? The eardrum. Yes. It's very delicate. If something gets in, like a dust, or an insect, or fly, or something like that, if it reaches the eardrum, the eardrum is extremely delicate. It can actually um, uh, rupture, okay? So that's why we have these, the, the air wax, which is called the ceramin, and it's protection. And, and actually, I, I remember um, a story regarding this part specifically. I was in the um, emergency room, and I had this kid that was really screaming. We didn't know what's wrong, and he's pointing to his ears. It was a child. I remember that was a long time ago. And uh, we, we tried to figure out what's going on. And we thought there, there should be something, like a fly or something. And what we did is I, I got some um, um, warm oil. I dropped it in his ears. And he just got fine. He was screaming like crazy. And scream, 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 and then stop. Scream, 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 and this stop. So I thought maybe there is a fly that's trapped in the wax inside, trying to escape but the legs were stuck in the wax. So every time the fly or the insect try to fly and move away, it can't, and every time he screams. And then the mosquito was like, just calm down a little bit and try to make it again. This is where he starts to scream. We just put a couple of drops of warm oil. The, the, the insect was killed. I don't, I don't remember what, what it was exactly. What one, some sort of a fly, but it died right away. Once we put the oil, and then we did some uh, air wash, and the kid was fine. I just remember this was really interesting um, during my work in the emergency. So um, this is for the ceraminous secretions, and we will stop here and do the rest with um, chapter, chapter uh, uh, six next time.